hockey fans, welcome to the Minnesota Hockey Connection Show. And this is Tuesday, I think it's January 28th. Yeah, it's January 28th, the boy, the month's going by fast. A lot of hockey to talk about. Pros, they're on break right now from the All-Star. And college, there's been some big series, North Dakota, UMD, and then UMD's going out to Denver this weekend. So two of the top five teams are playing in two weeks here. And then we got high school. We're close to the playoffs in high school. And juniors, the wilderness, are fighting for a playoff spot. So a lot of hockey to talk about. So let's get started. I'm going to start... Um, um, with uh, high school hockey. Yeah, right now, every week this month in January, there's been a different team that's gotten into number one in uh, Class AA, the big schools. And I'm just going to read off what I think are the top uh, 10 teams in Class AA. Number one, I'm going to, is Andover. Andover was number one a couple weeks ago, and they lost. All these teams have been losing a game here and there lately. So Andover's number one at 14 wins, three losses, and one tie. Moorhead, number two, 15 wins, three losses, one tie. Eden Prairie, 13 wins, four losses, and one tie. One thing about Eden Prairie, they're picking up this um, Jackson Blake kid. His dad played in the pros in North Dakota. He's a sophomore, and he played in the Elite League this last fall, and he was one of the better players. He uh, transferred to Eden Prairie, where he registered for classes, so they had to count it as a transfer when he registered. So he'll start playing on this weekend on the 1st of February. Number four, Rosemont, 15-4. and four. Number five, White Bear Lake. 13 wins, three losses, one tie. Blake High School, they're having a very good year. They're 14 and five. Maple Grove, number seven, 13 and five. Creighton Durham Hall with uh, their leader, Matt Gleason. I think he's uh, in double A. He's uh, one of the top scorers right now in uh, class double A. Creighton Durham Hall is 15, three and one. And number nine is Wazetta. They've upset a couple teams this past week. Uh, um, so look out for Wazetta. They're getting ready for sections. And then Prior Lake, 12, 4, and 3. And five teams to watch are Bernal St. Margaret, Blaine, Edina, Hill Murray, and Minnetonka. Then now let's get over to the Class A. Class A, I got... St. Cloud Cathedral, number one. They pulled out, pulled out a victory the other other day when they were behind, and at the end they scored a couple goals in the third period uh, to win the game. So they're still on top, 14-1-1. One one. Hermantown, 13 wins, one loss, four ties. War Road, we, I just saw them this weekend. Very good team, very disciplined and very organized in what they do. And, but this team has to go through section eight with East Grand Forks, but War Road number three, 18 and one. They're having an excellent year. East Grand Forks, 11, three and two, number four. Orono, number five, 15 wins, one loss, one tie. Monomita, 13 wins and six losses. Denfield, 14, 4, and 1. Alexandria, 12 wins and 5 losses. Delano, 12 wins, 6 losses. And Little Falls, 15 wins, 4 losses, and 1 tie. And 5 teams to watch in Class A. Monticello, Mound West Tonka, North Branch, St. Paul Johnson and Thief River Falls. So there you go with the rankings for this week. And like I say, let's see, the three weeks from now, 
the playoffs start on, that'll be February 19th, Tuesday. And some sections, well, all the sections in uh, Class A will have play-in games, but there's only one section that'll have play-in games in Class AA. So almost everyone starts on, like I said, Tuesday, February 19th. So that's just three weeks away for playoffs. Unbelievable. And I was um, looking uh, on my computer last night and we got a couple ex-UMD players that were on the squad. But I know Kashmir Kasasu was on the all-star team for the American Hockey League and Joey Anderson was named, but I don't know if he dressed or not. So that congratulations to them though. That's a big honor to be on the all-star team. And I was just looking in the paper today too. Um, it was Duluth East. They canceled, not canceled, but they postponed their last three games. Uh, almost every kid on the team has been sick. Many strains of the flu and they're just starting to get a little healthy, some of them. So they lost three games right now and they're trying to reschedule all three of them. So we'll see what happens with the rescheduling, but uh, this has never happened in Coach Randolph's 31 years. And it's just rare. They disinfected the locker rooms over at the Heritage, even the Denfield locker room last Saturday. So, and then all the players redid all the, cleaned all their equipment and everything. Cause, um, they canceled most of these games because, first of all, the kids couldn't play, but even if they're getting a little healthy, they don't want the other team to get sick now too. So, boy, it's um, this flu is hitting these young kids pretty big this year. And uh, a couple, uh, a little over a week ago, I was at a Forest Lake Duluth East uh, game, and Duluth East lost four to one, and. The big thing I notice is that Forest Lake had a, a girl goalie, and her name is Josie Bot Bothun. And boy, was she she good that night. She uh, made about 40 saves, and only one goal got in. And she's been recruited to Penn State. She's another uh, Rooney for UMD that played at Andover. I mean, this girl, I think, is really gonna be a good goalie in college. And so far in the uh, high school boys team, she's at 94% save percentage. And goals uh, per game is only 1.26. So this girl is not letting too many pucks in the, into the net. And then she's not that big of a girl either. She's only about 5'5". Five, five. But uh, she's doing a heck of a job down there at Forest Lake. So watch uh, Forest Lake. Another thing I noticed, because East lost that night, they might have to go on the road for their first game of the quarterfinals in the playoffs for the first time in Coach Mike Randolph's career at East. And that's amazing to me. But... Uh, they got a few games left. If they can close out with some wins, that might change. So, um, I saw Proctor the other night too, um, and assistant coach there is Scott Pion, who's uh, has one son playing at Hermantown High School, still a junior, has one son playing over at Saint Scholastica, and then has the one playing for the Winnipeg Jets and the Pearls, and Scott. Looks like uh, down the line, uh, you'll probably take over the whole Proctor boys program because um, Dan Stobler is probably gonna just be the AD up at the Proctor High School. So, but uh, that's a, a good thing for Proctor Hockey Association and keeping the kids in Proctor and playing at Proctor High School. And he'll, He's uh, one of the better coaches in the area. He's done camps for years in the uh, Duluth area. And so I'm looking forward 
to see how Proctor does in the future years. Um, down in the cities, uh, Coach Lee Smith of Eden Prairie got his 500th victory. Um, that's a lot of victories for a coach. You have to be there a long time. Since um, when he started, there's only 22 games a season, plus the playoffs. Now there's 25 games. So if you went to state tournament, you can possibly get 31 games in. So you got to get a lot of wins to get uh, 500 victories. And like I said, uh, they got a kid that's coming on now and six other D1 players on that team. So I think if they can get the chemistry with Jackson Blake with the other kids in the next three weeks, I think that might be the team to beat in class double A. I was at the UMD game against North Dakota this weekend and I saw my old friend uh, coach uh, Brendan Flaherty at the game. It looks like he's doing real well in that and uh, boy it's uh, kind of sad that he's not coaching at Marshall anymore and Probably that that can never happen again because of uh, cancer and what he went through and the infections in his body that he survived. And but it was good to see Brendan. He looked really good. So we hope he keeps on getting better and better as we go down the line. But it's good to see him come out to the hockey games. And talking about. Uh, Duluth Marshall program they just had a meeting where they they're considering different options because uh, the team doesn't have the numbers up there right now at Marshall and they got a lot of seniors this year if they stay the same they got to stay in class double a for another year before they can go down to class a and one of the options too though they're thinking is to co-op with another team in the area and the most likely team would be Proctor. So there's a lot of talk going on right now and I'm sure we'll see something in the next few months of what their plan is with uh, boys hockey at the high school. And boy it's a nice facility up there and I hope somehow they can keep it going and get hockey players, even if they have to co-op. Um, the Wild are on uh, break and right now for the All-Star, so they won't get back going until uh, Saturday, February 1st, when they have Boston at home. But I was just looking at the standings right now. Um, now, Minnesota is 11th in the Western Division. So they're five, five points off a playoff spot right now. And so they got to get going. But I was looking at their schedule. They got 17 home games and 15 away now left in the season, 32 games left. But their February schedule, they got 10 teams that are in playoff spots right now if the season stopped. So February is will be the month to see if they're gonna make it the playoffs, I think. If they don't do good in February, I, I don't see a chance of them making it. So they gotta beat some of these top teams this month and probably win two thirds of the games because it's gonna be tough because <laughs> there's too many teams that are just so close together and, so they got to beat especially every team in their own conference. And, but uh, looking over the central, the playoff teams, if it stopped today, St. Louis would be number one in the central, Colorado would be number two, and Dallas number three in the Pacific, Vancouver number one, Edmonton number two, Calgary number three, and well, over at the Metropolitan and the Eastern Conference, we got Washington, number one, P 
Pittsburgh number two, New York Islanders number three. In the Atlantic, we got Boston number one, Tampa Bay number two, Florida number three. And then uh, wild card teams in the West, we got Arizona and Vegas. And then over in the uh, Eastern Conference, we got Columbus and Carolina. But it's going to be a, a fight for the wild. And I expect uh, the general manager, Bill Guerin, to make uh, some trades coming up in the next month and a half. I can see it happening to try to get the team to the playoffs. So we'll wait and see there. But they start back on February 1st, Saturday. And then they're, they're home that day on Saturday night at 7 p.m. with Boston. Then they got uh, Chicago on uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. at the XL. Then they got Vancouver. So they got a lot of home games in February. So I hope uh, they have a good month and get in the playoff pitcher. I was over at the, the Wilderness and the Juniors and, um, on, Saturday, on Sunday afternoon, and they're fighting for a playoff spot. They're in fifth place, and the top four teams in their uh, division get to the playoffs. And I'll tell you what, it's good hockey watching that North American Hockey League. Uh, if you have a chance, uh, look up uh, the Wilderness, Minnesota Wilderness schedule for the North American Hockey League and try to get out to Cloquet for one of their home games. They have a lot of Minnesota kids on the team. And I mean, every it's up and down action. And But uh, this weekend, it wasn't a good weekend. Jane, Jamesville came in, the Jets from Janesville, Wisconsin, and they beat the Wilderness in overtime on Saturday night, four to three, and then came back the next day on Sunday and beat them five to three. The game was played at Proctor's new rink up there in Proctor. Usually all the home games are up in Cloquet, um, Northland Credit Union Arena. and But they had a, St. Luke's uh, was sponsoring it and they sponsored the Proctor rink and that, so they had a good crowd there and it was fun, a lot of people um, enjoying the game. So get out and watch the wilderness. You'll really enjoy it. But uh, the big series of the week was UMD in North Dakota in D1 college hockey. Uh, North Dakota came into Amsoil on Friday night, and I tell you, the crowds were crazy. The North Dakota fans that were at the game were crazy. On um, Friday night, they had just a little over 7,000 and uh, sellouts 6,700 at Amsoil. And uh, North Dakota had a 3 1 lead. And uh, I tell you, UMDs just took over from there where they scored three. Two more goals in the second, three goals in the second to take a 4-3 lead. And they beat uh, North Dakota 7-4. And I tell you what, the fans were happy. The North Dakota people, I think they went out and had more beer. <laughs> but it was a great game for UMD. It's kind of funny that week before they were up at uh, St. Cloud State and they only scored one goal in the two games. And here they, with the second best team in college hockey, they score seven goals on Friday night. So that was great hockey Friday night. So the next night, everyone thought the game was gonna get chippier because North Dakota lost. And the one thing that stuck out right away was the crowds were, you couldn't walk around the, Amsoil in between periods without getting back to your seat in the 15 minute break. It was that crowded. It was just packed in there. They had the biggest crowd for a hockey game ever 
in Duluth, 7,711. They had an extra 700 standing room tickets they sold from the night before. So both games, I mean, first time ever over 7,000, I think. So big crowds and U UMD was in that game all the way until the very end when North Dakota scored a couple goals. And I tell you, I mean, the fans went away a little discouraged, but UMD played a great weekend of hockey. And, and North Dakota, because of their victory on Saturday night, got to the number one spot in pairwise right now. And the funny thing about it, UMD went down a spot before, they started at 11 when the series started Friday night. They went to 12 after the series. And that's one of the reasons I just don't understand this pair-wise, how they can do something like that when a team plays the one of the best teams in the nation and beats them good in one night and comes close to beating them the second night and they go down and the other team goes, gets, gets a better ranking. But we'll see when the final pair wise. But UMD goes out to Denver this week. And I tell you, it's a big series because Denver is number four. So North Dakota's number one right now. And then Denver's number four in college hockey. And playing out there is a tough place to play in Denver. UMD usually has a tough time there. So if we can get a split, I think that will be a very good thing for UMD. And then they have to start sweeping some of these other series that they have left. And if they can get in the top ten in the pairwise when, right before the playoffs start, they will get to the college regions top, for the top 16 teams. And this year, um, the Western region will be out in Loveland, Colorado, where the Colorado Avalanche's farm team for the American Hockey League plays. So that should be a fun time out there this year. I like going and seeing different rinks when they play these regions and that, and seeing some of the newer rinks that they built for College, college hockey playoffs. It's just going over looking at the, some of the top scorers in um, pro hockey. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> some of these young kids, are, some of the young kids are getting a lot of goals, and some of the older ones are getting a lot of goals. Um, we got Austin Matthews from Toronto. He has 34 goals. But then we got Washington Capitals, Alex Ovechkin, one of the older players now in <laughs> National Hockey League, he has 34, so he's not giving up anything. I mean, he's still playing like he's a young kid. Then we got Nathan uh, McKinn. He has 30 goals. Jack Eckel, he was a Hobie Baker winner. At, he's playing at Buffalo. He has 28 goals. Connor McDavid, 27 goals. He's probably my favorite hockey player right now. He does it all, 200 feet, makes a lot of assist. So I see a lot of young kids that are really stepping up and doing their thing. Uh, in the assists, Connor McDavid has 40, how many do they have? 49 assists. So he's over 70 some points already. So he's getting way over, he's probably getting a point and a half a game. That's amazing in uh, pro hockey. And then uh, let's go to the Minnesota Wild. 
on uh, scoring. Right now, the leader in the Minnesota Wild locker room for scoring is Eric Stahl. He's got 16 goals and 20 assists for 36 points. Ryan Suter, the defense man, seven goals, 28 assists for 35 points. Zach Parisi, 19 goals, 12 assists. So Parisi and Suter are still getting a lot of points, even though they're starting to age a lot. They've been here um, seven years already. That's crazy. When they, with that 13 year contract, most amazing contract in hockey I've seen. But they're still putting up points and they're out there every game. So that's what I like. They can play every game and they're not injured. Uh, number four on the wild scoring is uh, Jason Zucker. Zucker, I'm sorry. And he has 13 goals, 14 assists. He might be up in for a trade talk, I bet, coming up in the next month or so. Then Kevin Fiella, he has nine goals and 18 assists. Matt Zaccarella, he has 12 goals and 14 assists for 26 points. Luke Coonan, 12 goals and 12 assists, 24 points. So. A lot of these uh, players that came in from trades are, they're not doing that bad. I think they're doing a little better than the players that we traded. So that's a good sign. And some of these younger ones are starting to play a little better too. So we'll see, I, but I'm sure there's gonna be some trades. So we'll see how the Minnesota Wild do this month of February because I really believe they don't do good this month. It's, um. I think it's just going to be hard for them to make uh, the playoffs. Well, that's it for today's show. But, uh, hey, high school hockey is coming to the end of the season, and these teams are get out there and see some high school games. You'll really love it, and wherever you are in the state of Minnesota. And I'll see you at the rink. So thank you, Pac TV. And Jim and Vicki for producing the show, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.